What is up, Pyromaniacs? Pyrostasis here. We are back in the world of Elden Ring. I'm excited. I have managed to make a wheel and deal with the wife so I get a waffle in the morning with eight pieces of turkle ba turkle bacon. Turkey bacon? God dang freaking language is hard. So much excited about that. Okay. So we have cleared Rata, Rata, whatever the hell his name is, down there. Um, and apparently there's a guy up here. So I, I think we want to kind of explore this area up around here. Uh, what I'm going to... God, I hate... We're going to go up here and head backwards. I think that might be the best way to do it. And see if I can't find the next boss. I know there's plenty, but, uh, and I hope I'm doing these in the right order. I don't think I am, but that's the other thing about this game is, like, it's so open world, like, you don't even know if you're going in the right direction. Okay, there we go. That's where I want to go. I got my stuff on. It does actually not look like I have my buffs on. Okay, I apparently do. Okay. Interesting. All right, and we are rolling. We are fast traveling. Good, 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 good. Okay. So, um, our sword is about as upgraded as we can make it at the current time. Uh, to make it more upgraded, we need a plus seven, uh, somber stone and plus seven. Oh, hello guys. Hi, it's all good. We was just playing. All right. Let's uh, just give you a fast one. Yeah. You want some too? Works for me. How about you? You want some? Oh, you do. Okay. Dude, this sword is lethal. Oh my god. I just wrecked these guys. This shit makes me feel like a goddamn Jedi. I love it. Go ahead and pop this, because probably killing the rest of these guys is going to give me a little bit of, uh, of an FP boost, which is fine with me. Not looking forward to fighting this pumpkin head. That's going to suck a dick, but that's okay. I'm going to walk past this other guy and hit the shield. What? Did he hit me? In the animation? He did. Motherfucker, you better back the fuck off. Whoa. Okay. Ooh. That one hurt him. Oh god, I don't have any- what the fuck? Do I not have any stamina? What the fuck happened there? It wouldn't let me do it. Dude, where are you going? We ain't done. Get your ugly ass over here. I'm about to go Kawasawa on your ass. Alright. That hurt. A lot. Okay, what's up, dude? Dude, I just killed that dude who's like five times your size. You think you're gonna stop me? Spoiler, you're not. Okay. Let's go, bros. What did you, did you think you actually blocked my shit? Y'all crazy. Oh, hello. Really? I'm offended. Fuck it. <laughs> Just cut your ass in half. Oh my god, this sword is amazing. I wish I had gotten this shit like earlier. This is bad as hell. So anyways, uh, the plus seven sword, or the, the plus seven somber swords, the, the plus seven somber stones are located, I think, right in here. So, and that, I think, is an end game area. So, I'm not against going there. Did I wander off the path? No, I did not. Okay. I'm not against going there. I just don't think it's in my best interest to go there at the moment. So, I like how I've picked all these guys off and they're just like, oh, it's cool. So I mentioned a couple videos ago that I was working on writing my book and 
Uh, I've, I've got a loose outline started, not completed, but started. Making me, oh, okay. Um, got a long way to go, obviously, because I was talking to one of the guys on YouTube, and he's, he had volunteered. It's a guy who's been around for a long, long time, Ex Calvin. Um, and he's like, you know, because I'm eventually going to need proofreaders and things like that. And he's like, you know, I volunteer. I'm like, sweet. Uh, and I mean, right now I'm not looking for that because, you know, it's too early in the process. But uh, I definitely... Are you kidding me? I definitely will be looking for that in the future. So um, I appreciate it. And I'll try to remember who volunteered. But odds are, you know, I'll just mention it in a video. And then hopefully y'all are watching that video. And the people who want to do it will be able to do it then. So... But uh, it's funny, like, when you first start writing a book, you start realizing all the stuff that you don't know. And I've, I have read more books probably than most of the people on this channel. And I don't mean that in a bragging way. I'm just, it's, it's, a, how do you put it? I, more like a fact, I guess. And there'll probably be people who disagree, and that's fine, because... I hope more of you have read than I have, but um, when I was young, whoa, okay, I'm not getting that bleed effect, I wonder how, what I have to do to, oh, I hit his arm, oh, got it there, oh, dude, there we go. Um, and I've told the story many times, but um, I hated reading when I was little, and my mom used to punish me by making me read, and we moved to a new house, and at the new house, there was nobody my age, so, you know, I didn't have any friends, and this was before the internet, and, you know, the only game system we had was a Sega Genesis. Now, this was back when a Sega Genesis was new, but, you know, uh, Sega Genesis isn't something like Elden Ring, where you're going to play it for, you know... 150 hours. It was Sonic the motherfucking Hedgehog, which is fun, but it's not a 100-hour game, you know what I mean? I mean, it may be to some people, it wasn't to me. Uh, so, my summer was literally spent reading the entire library in my city that I grew up in, and I, I do mean the entire fiction section. Um, I think it was 157,000, 125,000 pages, something like that. It was, it was ridiculous. Like, all of the blue hardback Hardy Boys books, all of the new hardback Hardy Boys books, all of the soft brand new paperback Hardy Boys books, um, all of the original hardback Nancy Drew books, all of the new hardback Nancy Drew books, all the soft or I keep calling them softback, paperback Nancy Drew books, uh, all of the Choose Your Own Adventures. Um, there was a series. Anyways, you get the point. It was a lot. And, uh, I mean, when you're reading... my, You know, when you're 12 years old, you pick things up quick. And my, you know, I went from not reading much to reading a lot. And my speed got ridiculous. I mean, I could... I mean, most of this is young adult fiction, so we're talking averaging of about 200 pages... Well, more like 150 pages to 200 pages. Uh, so they're, they're not big books, but uh, I would read four of them a day, uh, every day for the entire summer. And so, you know, you're talking about, what, that's roughly 90 days. 90 times four is roughly 360 books at, you know, whatever that page count is, and you get quite a lot. And then once I ran out of all of those books, I mean, like I literally read the, the library out like, there was nothing left to read. Um, that's when I started going to Barnes & Noble, and that's when I got into R.L. Stein, Dean R. Coons, um, and then eventually Michael Crichton and... Uh, what was it? Uh, Stephen King. Uh, Stephen King... Uh, like, his books are hit and miss. Like, there's a lot of really good stuff in there. And then, like, there's just... Like, I'm all for dark shit for this, you know, for whatever reason, but, like, there's dark shit that's, like, makes sense, and then there's dark shit that's, like, okay, this is a little too much even for me, if that makes sense. So, a lot of Stephen King, especially some of his weird, like, uh, I don't know how to put it, but, like, he gets in, like, his characters, some of them are truly evil, and, like, 
just over the top and I, I, it was just too much for me but um, you know I read The Stand I read uh, everything Michael Crichton put out and I do mean everything um, it I think it was the sequel to it Did, was there a sequel to it uh, there was was it Insomnia like Stephen King has some beefy books and at that point it was a challenge to me because I had just read out a library so for me at that point I was then reading what I could read to prove to myself that I could read giant books so I started reading you know things that were three or thousand pages not necessarily because I cared about the material but you know just because fuck it I was reading a three thousand page book and you know then I got into uh Tom Clancy and anyways the point is I read a shit ton of books and so when you go to st when you when you read a lot of those books a lot of those books are written by smart people so you start picking things up and sci-fi is written a lot of times by ex-physicists ex um I don't know how you be an ex-physicist but you you get what I'm probably trying to say um people who did physics for a living you know physicists um anyways so it was funny, I, I started picking up things like, you know, what a Higgs boson is, what a, you know, or, oh fuck, I forget it now, what is it, the uh, Rosenstein Bridge, um, you know, all of that stuff, gravity waves, just all sorts of fucking shit, and, you know, I always just assumed it was all bullshit, right? Like, it's sci-fi, I assumed it to be sci-fi fiction. Uh, comes to find out, a lot of it was fiction but the thing about science fiction is it's not all make-believe does that make sense like a lot of that stuff is based on theory like for instance we know how to do let me rephrase know how to do is not the right term well, i guess it kind of is like we have known theoretically how to go faster than light for a long time the problem is to get there requires things that we're not capable of doing. Does that make sense? It's kind of like, I know how to bake a cake. I have the recipe, but I don't have eggs. You know, how the fuck are we supposed to make this without eggs? And so the whole premise then becomes trying to figure out how to make it without eggs, if that makes sense. And our problem for the most part, oh God, dang it. Our problem with a lot of this stuff is power, you know, some of the stuff requires more power than the universe can generate and so that makes for some very interesting issues um so you things like the alcubaire Al drive you have you know other things like ramjets and stuff like that that could theoretically get you there um you know you have the there's a an engine that's powered by nuclear bombs where you drop nuclear bombs out the back and basically have a giant shock absorber which absorbs it you know there's there's a bunch of different shit and then of course you've got the breakdown of whether it's actually feasibly possible you know and then you get into time travel and you get into all this other shit so m the point of all this blabbering is you know when i'm writing my book i'm not doing something that far-fetched thankfully uh most of my it's it's a book i've always wanted oh god no 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 okay we're good thank you I did not want to be face humped by you, sir. Whoa, the range on you, brother. Okay, fuck it. Um, that's not good. That's not good. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Okay. That was really close. Okay. I inked a little. Um, so I'm, I'm not doing anything fantastic like that, because mainly I'm not comfortable enough creating bullshit on that level. Um, where the f fuck does that go? What? Why am I? Oh god, I'm defending someone. Okay, cool. This will be fun. So anyways, uh, there's a lot of things I need to look up now. Like, uh, in one book I read, uh, gravitational waves traveled faster than light. So you could use gravitational waves to communicate across vast expanses of space. Well, it turns out that's not true. Um, gravitational waves upon research seem to actually only travel at... Where the fuck is this guy? So I'm here. He's up above me? How the fuck do I get up there? 
Is there a... Yeah, he's up there. Both of them are up there. Uh, wait, wait. Isn't there something I can cast that will get me closer? Uh... Oh, he died. Okay. Lures, invaders, answers, requests. I thought there was something that would get me closer to him. So one hunter's died. And I can't summon my horse. Summoning another cooperator. Okay. I'll stick with this for now. Um, so anyways, you have to do a lot of research on stuff, and obviously it's a book, so you get, you know, you can kind of get some leeway, but I don't want to, you know, completely go off the rails, so, alright, he's up here somewhere, there he is, so I'm trying to, you know, get some of my stuff figured out. All right, we're all fighting down here. I see him. Pearl Finger Tachio. Where's the bad guy? Are we chasing him? I think the furled finger dude is a friendly and the host of fingers is a friendly. So where's the bad guy? What the fuck? Okay. Okay. Something sh Ah, there he is. So he's behind us. Shooting. Okay, so I must have walked past that dude, but there he is. He's right there. He's sniping at us. Or trying to. There he is. Alright, we got him. Okay. Y'all coming or what are we doing? The guy's right over here. Hello. Okay. Why are we summoning? Oh my god, we're gonna get fucking totaled by this guy. Okay, there he is, there he is. Okay. Oh god! I'm fucked! Nope. Uh-uh. Fuck me, dude. That's really frustrating for me because I lose my great rune when I go in there, which lowers all of my stats, which basically gimps my build, which is unfortunate. I need to fix that. Uh, which I can do, obviously, with just spending more stuff, but um, it's just weird that I have it in my world because, yeah, I've got it here, see? But I lose it when I go there, which is absolutely frustrating as hell. Um, so anyways, back to the whole book thing. So, you know, obviously you get a little bit of... Um, when, you're, when you're writing science fiction and stuff like that, you have a bit of leeway. I mean, you have as much leeway as you want. It's your fucking world. You can literally change the laws of physics if you want to. But, you know, you have to be careful with that stuff because then you end up with what I call the Fast and the Furious effect, which is, you know, basically... Just saying, fuck the laws of physics, and when you do that, you know, it pisses people off. I literally read a book once where, and I don't remember the name of the book, it was on Kindle Unlimited, but uh, it, was, uh, the, the whole, it was a science fiction novel, and the general gist of it was you... Where the fuck are we? Um, 
there was a bunch of space fighters and shit, and they were powered by lasers. So they would be launched from their ship, and then when launched, the lasers would push, like a laser would shoot out from the ship and hit a panel on the back of the fighter, and then with that it would propel the fighter forward, which technically would work, sort of. Um, it would make it very hard to change direction, um, if not impossible, because um, when a force is pushing behind you, you know that, that would work great to an extent in atmosphere, but it doesn't work outside of atmosphere because you don't have any, there's no aerodynamics. You can't control anything. Are we bad? So because there's no aerodynamics, oh, yeah, I need the seventh one, but that's not bad. Because there's no aerodynamics, you can't use wind resistance. So just because you have thrust doesn't mean you have control. And that becomes a real problem. And then how do you return to the ship? Because the ship can only push you away. So, and if you can't turn and all you can do is, you know, you're literally just a dumb fire missile. So like the whole... If you can get past that, it, it's probably a, an entertaining read. But for me, I couldn't get past those things. It's very similar to the movie Moonfall recently that came out. Um, well, it's been out for a while, but it came out on DVD recently. Um, it's ridiculous. Like, there's a part in that show, or in that movie, where the moon is getting close. The, the whole premise of the movie is the moon is basically crashing into the Earth. That's the whole premise. And so... Um, as the moon gets closer, something's going to hit me. As the moon gets closer, uh, it starts having more of a gravitational effect on the Earth, which is technically accurate. Um, but gravity doesn't work the way they, whoever wrote this fucking thing, seems to think. You don't just get to, like, if the moon were to get close enough to us to, you know, like, we're talking like less than, you know, 10 miles away. Um, you wouldn't be pulled to the moon because Earth's gravity is superior to the moon's gravity, so you would not be pulled to the moon under any circumstances. Yet, in the movie, they literally use that, and the whole point of that is even asinine, because even if you could get pulled, it wouldn't come and go. You, oh shit, that's not what I meant to do. Sheath, and boom. Oh god. There we go. Um, uh, this guy's totally... Get out of my way. Is that guy dead? No, he's not. He's just an idiot. How the fuck are you that blind? And what is this other dude doing? Are you crying? Are you... Okay, whatever. Um, so, like, there was a scene where, like, a tree was crushing this boy, and so the moon was orbiting the Earth, and it got closer, and so as it's getting closer... The girl, you know, 95 pound girl needs to lift this, like, you know, three ton tree off this boy. And she's like, okay, wait, the moon's coming. We'll use its gravity to lift it. And I'm just like, what? Because if the moon was capable of doing it, let's just say, and it's possible, you know, if the moon was dense enough that it could have a stronger gravitational field than the Earth, then gravity wouldn't come and go. It would just rip you off the surface of the planet. It was stupid. So... Anyways, that, that's enough examples of stupidity. The point is, you have to be careful with that stuff because you don't want to alienate your audience. And most science fiction readers, in my experience, or at least from my own personal experience, I can't speak for others, um, would notice those type of things. You know, that's a fairly, you know, that, that laws of physics, laws of gravity, you know, stuff like that. Like I said, most sci-fi is written by physicist or former physicist or whatever you want to call them and uh you know that's the type of stuff that those type of people are familiar with so it's not something that they're just gonna get let go and so uh, in writing my book i have to be careful to uh take all that into account okay you need to chill the fuck out buddy How the fuck are you still alive? Okay, where is this guy throwing things at me from? 
I don't I didn't think it was you, but apparently. So, you know, some of the problems that I'm looking at is, you know, uh, one of the things in my book is, I think they're above me up there. Yep. Uh, it deals with multiple universes. So, you know, we're talking about objects and things coming from one universe to another. So, upon, and, you know, we're just going to say wormholes for this intense purposes. And wormholes have their own physics and such and their own issues. But let's say you're able to do wormholes. Well, obviously, the creation of a wormhole and the appearance of a wormhole and then the transition of an object through said wormhole is going to cause some some interesting physical stuff in our world. It's going to manifest in a way. It's kind of like a nuclear bomb going off, but not quite. So what would happen, theoretically, of course, if that were to happen? You know, how would we notice this would we notice this you know what would be required to notice this what would it look like what would it you know how would it manifest etc 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 and so i'm trying to figure out some of those things and it's not as easy as just looking up and saying hey you know what, what happens when the universe uh, collapses into another universe and what do we see you know you, you've got to either ask a physicist or actually do some real, like, manly research, um, so to speak. So, drop down. Okay, night night. There was somebody throwing something at me, but I guess it was those two dickbags. And they're now dead dickbags, so don't care anymore. So anyways, uh, that's one of the issues I'm having trouble with, you know, because originally I was going to have it be gravitational waves because I thought gravitational waves moved faster than the speed of light. And so the transitioning of an object from that universe to our universe would or project gravitational waves. And then we would detect that possibly on Earth and that would be a notification. But that doesn't work that way. Uh, from my understanding, gravitational waves move at the speed of light, not faster than the speed of light, like the other book I read. So, uh, which is a minor thing, I guess, but uh, now that I know it, it bugs me, and I don't know if I'd want to use it, you know? So, then it comes down to, okay, well, is being limited to the speed of light that bad? And it's not really that bad, because, you know, our solar system is relatively small. It would be a problem if I was talking on a galactic scale, or, you know, even our local, um, what do you call it, uh, be wary of center. What? So anyways, I have to figure that out and figure out, you know, what I'm doing with it. Um, the other issue is... Oh, it's one of those motherfuckers. Oh god, okay. This will be the first one of these I've actually fought and or possibly killed. This will be interesting. Alright, let's stay on the health flasks. I don't know if it sees me, I think it does. Oh, yeah, he definitely does. Whoa, that hurt. Heal. Fuck it. Aren't you pretty? Later, bitch. 2300. That's it. Okay. Interesting. Strong foe my ass. Okay. So anyways, that's one of the problems that I'm running into is like exotic particles, their speeds, um, you know, I'm talking about neutrinos, quarks, plan or planks? I think so. I don't know. A bunch of, basically a bunch of Hadrian Collider type shit that I have to figure out. Uh, and I don't have to, you know, know it all 100%. I just have to know enough of it to be able to kind of bullshit my way through it. And it's not really a major part of the book, so I may just, you know, there's a lot of stuff, kind of like Star Trek physics, where you don't actually have to cover everything. You just have to use scientific stuff 
to kind of take care of it. So like a lot of stuff in Star Trek, they would just fix with the deflector shield by moving power to the deflector shield. They never actually said what the deflector shield did other than like surface level stuff, if that makes sense. You know, like ship bad, ship hurt us. We're going to send power to the deflector shield, which is going to invert the power relay and save us. What the fuck does that even mean? Well, you don't have to know. You know, it's enough to where, you know, Okay, he's dead. It's enough to carry the story. You know, it's it's basically magic, you know? Where you, you, you're not going to really get to understand how it all works, but you don't need to because it's a small part of the story, you know? Uh, and I am not a physicist, and I am not going to get a physics degree for a book. So, so the other issue is some of the stuff I'm looking at, and, and then you have to start looking at how you want your conflicts to be run. So, for instance... Um, there are going to be rail guns in my book without giving too much away. And so in that, uh, you're going to have basically, for the all intents and purposes, ball bearings accelerated to a high speed. And uh, that ball bearing is going to be used to do damage to things. So the question is, uh, what happens? Like, like how, how fast do you want those to come out? Because... You know, you can speed up, theoretically, with enough power and a strong enough magnet, uh, you know, projectiles like that. That's what a mass driver basically is. You can f you can really do some insane damage with that shit. I mean, like, an object moving at a fraction of the speed of light, let's say 20% speed of light, or 10% speed of light, or even 5% speed of light, the amount of kinetic force and damage that would cause is insane. Um, and I have to be careful with that, because... What the fuck? Oh, hi. Sorry, didn't mean to knock you off your cross there. Anyways, so then I have to be careful with that, because, you know, if this railgun is shooting at 10% of the speed of light, let's say, and then I, let's say, wanted to have a military force engage these guys, well, if you show up in an MRAP, an MRAP is going to be, which is an armored vehicle, um, that armored vehicle is going to take care of you with everything that pretty much a conventional force can throw at you short of anti-tank weapons, right? So as long as you're not hit by, you know, a javelin or... We'll talk, we'll talk. I don't care if you're hungry, buddy. Sorry. Uh, I should probably buy that just for shits and giggles. Uh, he doesn't have anything else. Okay. Perfect. Um, so anyways, this MRAP, or armored vehicle, tank, whatever, uh, SWAT car, whatever you want to call it, would protect you against the vast majority of, you know, small arms fire, um, you know, even decent-sized, heavier projectiles short of again a tank shooting at you an anti uh, any tank weapon etc etc well what would happen to a mrap if it got hit by a ball bearing traveling at five percent speed of light uh bad things really bad things so that ball bearing is going to go right through that mrap um well i guess that kind of depends too um because, you know, you're at a certain point you're dealing with uh, the projectile's not going to survive, if that makes sense. Okay, let's move. Heal. What the fuck? What the fuck was that? How have your poly okay that let's see how has his pulleys not been shattered by now? Jesus. Um so that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know? Maybe you want to have an enemy that can just destroy uh, armored vehicles. But then the problem you run into is, well, what if you don't? Like, what if you want your friends, you know, your armored military battalion to be able to fight these guys? 
The Salt of Volcano Manor, the Squalid, the Sick, the Blasphemous, a Wretched, Uneating War with No Glory. Okay. Fun, fun. Okay. Righto. So then you, you kind of run into problems because if you want an armed force to engage this other armed force, um, if this thing's shooting little ball bearing size holes right through the tank, uh, that's not going to work. That's not, um, you, you, you can't do that. I mean, you, you can, you're, it's your book, you can do whatever the fuck you want, but, um, oh god, madness. I think that's madness. Yeah, you're done. Nice, dude. So madness, I think, is like a holy... I want to say it's a holy, like a faith thing, but I'm not sure. But I believe that's what that thing is on my uh, screen there. And I'm not 100% sure. But it's a lot like... Uh, any other thing, but I believe once you hit the madness limit, so to speak, you just fucking die. So not something we want to do. Okay, there's a grace across the way, so we're going to go hit that real quick and then we'll come back. So yeah, you know, you run into problems there, so then you have to like rail it back a little bit and, you know, then you gotta you gotta just look into it and that's a lot of it, it, how does one look up you know I'm, I'm not uh I'm, I'm not somebody that has a test lab where i could just shoot ball bearings at you know the speed of sound followed by you know a little faster than the speed of sound you know uh etc cetera, etc cetera, on various different types of metallic alloys and such and i'm sure there's probably a formula somewhere that i can look up so uh and i'm probably most likely overthinking all of this but it's stuff that's going through my head and it's like okay well you know is this a weapon i really want to use how do i want to use it what speeds what velocities what damage you know and all that doesn't even tag into account radiation because once you start dealing with re relativistic velocities my understanding is radiation gets created because bad things happen to particles when they hit other particles at fractions of the speed of light so uh oh jeez us Hello. Um, is that a scorpion tail? I do believe. Okay, let's roll. Okay, I'm fucking. Okay, all right, that that works. Okay, full-grown falling star beast. Interesting. Just knocked my fucking ass right off the cliff. Perfect. That will do. That will do. So yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that that I have to look into and then decide how I want to handle it because, you know, you can't go into too much detail unless you know your details right. You can't go into too little detail or else, you know, you run into the same similar problem. So I don't know. It's something I'm thinking of and having issues with and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I want to change these guys out because they're fucking useless. Um... I wonder if that thing inf in imposes rot. Uh, yeah, I know those guys are just going to last about four seconds. I don't know, maybe these spirits will actually do something, but in my experience they don't. They do take a hit really well, but that seems to be about the only thing they're capable of doing. They don't move very fast, they don't do anything very quickly, they don't do a lot of damage. Uh, but they do seem to have like a frost effect which might be useful we'll see we'll see but yeah and it's it's very interesting trying to do research on this stuff because you know i feel like a terrorist you know googling this type of shit you know it's like how does one google how much damage does a ball bearing do to police armor you know it's like no i'm, I'm asking for a friend you know it's like please please don't arrest me type deal you know what i mean it, it's just kind of fun it's kind of funny I hit the wrong thing. Okay. Oh, 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 they got fucked. So did I. Oh my god, okay. 
Don't, don't roll that way. That's bad. Oh, that's electricity. We don't want that. Fucking hell! Okay, well, the Mary Antoinette's or whatever kind of held up pretty good there, actually. I was rather surprised. <laughs> they're, they're still alive. Shocking. I didn't mean to cast them. I meant to cast the other one, but hit the wrong button. So, yeah, you know, a lot of that stuff. It, it is kind of interesting, though, because you can shoot. I knew that when you accelerated objects to a certain velocity that they would go through other objects. I just didn't realize how much. Like, you can accelerate a baseball to the speed of sound and do a lot of fucking damage. Like, that shit will go through steel plates. It's crazy, because it's a fucking baseball. I mean, baseballs are hard, but it's crazy some of the stuff that you can accelerate. I mean, there's videos on YouTube of people doing all sorts, like a potato you can do damage with. And people don't even think of a potato as a ballistic weapon, but you accelerate it to a certain velocity and you're going to do some fucking shit. It's crazy. And so, you know, I, it just gets you to thinking. So my goal is to try and find something that's nice without um, going too crazy. So I get on my horse. Move! Jump off horse! Oh god, we can't jump off the horse yet. Move. That's a fucking death right there. Hop it. Move. Uh, use it. Oh god. What in the fuck was that? Okay. Oh, that hurt. Get up, get up. I rolled there. That's some bullshit. That is some bullshit, dude. That thing is fucking nasty, and I don't know what the hell that thing is. I do want to try and get away from it now, though. I don't think I can actually fight this thing right now. I mean, I guess I can, but I don't know how much damage I'm doing to it. Um, we do know that the... Uh... Will that take me up there, I wonder? Huh. So I guess this is just your way down, and the other way is your way up? Interesting. We'll see this little fucker's nasty. And having to climb this, I'm assuming I can just hit that and jump it. So I'll probably do that next time. I think the ladder is actually your way back down. Because as far as I can tell, it's the only thing up here you have to do is fight that thing. Um, before we go all the way up, though, I do want to change this guy. I want to try the wolves. And then I want to use this, so I can't use it while I'm climbing. Oh, there's something... Th oh, Jesus. I don't even want to know how you got to that position. Okay, where is my body? It's straight down there somewhere? On the other side, maybe? I don't know. Okay. Use... go. Okay. Oh, come on, dude. Fucking hell, man. Alright, so the horse is definitely not a viable option. Not even remotely a viable option. I definitely want to see if something can summon the rot. So I want to try this and see if, like, the rot will hit it. Because if it will, that would be amazing. Jump off. Summon. Okay. Where is my stuff?
Dude, I fucking rolled into that and it still hit me. Where is my stuff? Like, seriously, where is my stuff? What the fuck? Oh, I see it now. I'm dead. I'm gonna lose 40,000 souls. No! Did I get it? I got it. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I picked it up one frame before he killed me. That's wild. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk up there and get my shit then, cause uh, I I I I may try and kill this guy a little bit, but I, I don't think I'm gonna pound my face against him tonight. Just not in the mood for it. Uh, but it definitely gives us something to work for. So, but yeah, uh, if you know any resources for any of the stuff that I talked about tonight, like, you know, strange particles based on wormholes and or, you know, multi-dimensional travel or um, projectiles being accelerated uh, to fast velocities and doing damage to vehicles and or other things, I would love to see it. Um, I did watch the Navy's railgun test recently and that was absolutely disturbing. Okay, so it's right over there. So what I gotta do is actually no 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 get off. What we wanna do is this, summon this, and then summon that. And then jump. Okay, move, let me see. Okay, and then move, 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 get off, see you bitch, Woo! dude if he jumps off after me, I will lose my mind, alright I think we're good, okay, unless he wants to come down and play, is he jumping off? Okay, I didn't think so. All right, perfect. Ah. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> well, that worked out pretty well. I just realized I have another spell. So, ooh, what is this? Rock Blaster, throw staff in the ground to emit an... Okay, no. I wanted to try the, uh, the mist one. That sounds like it might be pretty badass. <sighs> yeah. This could be pretty good, too. But I, I think, oh, we'll just, uh, yeah, I don't have enough stuff for that. I, I, I do have the ability to do this. I want to try and see what that does. I just want to see it. Oh, I guess it would help if I actually selected the damn spell. Oh, well, that's pretty dirty right there. Oh, that shit hurts me too. Oh, wow, that's actually... Oh my god, it lasts for a while, too. It's still going. That shit's pretty vile. Yeah, I think that could be really handy, actually. That could be really handy. I like it. I like it. I'm willing to uh, to give that shit a shot. All right, cool. Anyways, folks, I think that's a good stopping spot for today's video. Thanks for watching. Listen to me rant and rave. If you like this video and want to help support the channel, please hit the like button. Leave a comment in the comment section. Both of those drastically improve the YouTube algorithm, which helps me out immensely. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.